Hey guys, what's going on? Guess who's back? Back again. Jack the Job is back. Phone up the beers. That's right, I'm back from holiday in Barcelona and I've got a serious case of the holiday blues. But what better way to get back to work than with a brilliant edition of Ups and Downs? Let's up those down. Let's up. Still need to think of an intro. As always, this is based on an article by the wonderful Scott Carlson. Check that out over at whatculture.com. However, in this edition in particular, we've disagreed on a few things, so it's well worth checking out both this and the article to see where we differ. First of all, what on earth was going on with that opening segment? You may have been a little bit confused to tune into Raw to see each Money in the Bank participant sat on their own individual ladder having a nice discussion. It was very strange, but I'm going to actually give it an up because there was wonderful promo work from Cesaro, Jericho, and most of all, Kevin Owens. Next up, we it's not sunny at all. Then, just as our opening segment began to gather steam, in walked our first down of the night, Teddy Long. That's right, the former SmackDown general manager made the most baffling comeback of the year so far, strolling out, fluffing his lines and being emasculated by Stephanie McMahon. It, I, 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 does anyone know what this was for? I certainly don't. It's definitely a down. Then Stephanie McMahon made a series of matches, including the first of the night, Cesaro v Chris Jericho, and thankfully, Cesaro won clean, so that's enough. It's worth pointing out that Jericho's fully willing to tap out clean to Cesaro on an edition of Raw, uh, but still couldn't put over AJ Styles at WrestleMania 32. That's very curious. It's very curious indeed. Another up now, how good was that video package concerning Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns? This seemed to represent a big leap forward for WWE as they presented Seth Rollins in quite a sympathetic light for a heel. Uh, for any neutrals watching who are completely unfamiliar with the history of Rollins and Reigns, you'd definitely be more inclined to root for Seth, so that's, that's a very interesting breach of the traditional face-heel dynamic. At least it was a good video package until we got to the part where Roman Reigns won at WrestleMania 32. As you'll see on the video package, he raises the belt, standing over Triple H, and there are just cheers piped in from every angle, and that's not what happened at all. I was there. We weren't cheering. I was there. Now, it's all well and good for Raw to feature a great video package charting the, the history of Rollins and Reigns, but why didn't either guy appear on the show? That definitely has to count as a down, considering it's the, the top feud at the moment on the WWE roster. Then we saw Rusev come out to challenge Jack Swagger, the hometown boy, so you know he's not going to win because it's, it's in his hometown, and Vince hates hometown boys because he's just, just a mean, just a mean man. Anyway, it looks as though Rusev, having now vanquished Kalisto, gonna take the US Championship to new heights, he's now gonna feud with Swagger and Tyus O'Neil. So the US title is still very much in the doldrums for now. So I'm gonna count that as a down. We'll see where it goes. Not hopeful. Next up, a much more serious note, WWE's tribute to Muhammad Ali was touching and appropriate. So definitely an up for that one. Now this is one of the big points that myself and Scott Carlson disagree on because he had it as a down in his article, but I'm gonna have it as an up on this video. Enzo and Cass's match against the Vaude Villains had a very controversial ending as Aiden English threw Enzo into the middle rope, mimicking that legit injury that he sustained at the last pay-per-view. Now Scott wrote that this kind of crossed a line and it was quite a risky spot to pull off, but in fairness, they managed to pull it off. It showed a new darker side of Big Cass as he beat the Vaude Villains in revenge. And I do think this is what the feud needed to send it to the next level. Another up now, that promo segment between AJ Styles and John Cena. How good was that? This was arguably the high point of the entire show, and it did contain some shades of CM Punk Cena as well from back in 2011. However, whereas Punk was looking at it from very much a global point of view, he's the voice of the voiceless, he's the voice of the smarks, AJ Styles was saying, I'm here right now, look at my history. It was far more personal, and I think this could be maybe the storyline of the summer. Another down now, because for the second week in a row, after making a very, very underwhelming in-ring debut, the newly repackaged Primo and Epico are back to vignettes now. They're back to vignettes. And we all loved those for the 12, 30 months that they were on, so that's that's a down. Can we just get Los Matadores back? Por favor. See my Spanish? I was in Spain last week. I shouldn't even be at work. Next, another down. Sami Zayn v Del Rio. Sami Zayn won. No, he didn't. Del Rio won. Wish I was still in Spain. Now Charlotte's saying that although she doesn't want Rick in her life in a professional sense, she does want him in her life in a personal sense, which sort of dilutes the whole tirade she went on a few weeks ago. So I don't really understand what the point of this was. It takes away some of Charlotte's meanness as the top heel in the women's division. So that for me is definitely another down. Another down now, and yet another down based upon what I feel is a wrong booking decision. Dean Ambrose v Kevin Owens. Dean Ambrose wins. 
and it, it just sort of takes away a lot from Kevin Owens, especially because him getting his heat back involved Ambrose climbing the ladder after the match and Owens pushing it over. Why did Ambrose climb the ladder? That made him look like an idiot. Owens looks weak for losing. Ambrose looks weak because commentary played up the fact that he never quite, you know, get wins the big one. So this whole segment was just, oh, I'm really sorry guys. I just don't want to, I was on a beach last week this time. Thankfully, for the sake of my own sanity, we do end on a positive note as the club beat the New Day in what was unquestionably the correct decision, especially as the club is so closely affiliated with AJ Styles on his side of the feud with John Cena. There's no way really that you can count this as a down. It's, it's a strong point to end the show on and I am, as I said before, feeling very optimistic for the Styles-Cena match. So we'll see how that goes. Unfortunately, as you can see, uh, this week's Raw was on the whole, more of a negative show. The downs slightly outweighed the ups. Uh, hopefully WWE can get things back on track next week. But for now, that's all we've got time for on this week's edition of Ups and Downs. I've been Jack from rockculture.com. Follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore the jobber. Uh, I'm gonna slowly ease back into the working week, even though I'm terribly, terribly depressed about it. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll see you soon. It's raining. It's, I don't need, I might as well throw them in the bin. See you later. WhatCulture.com are releasing a new magazine about wrestling, and it's called Wrestling. It'll have 140 pages of timeless wrestling content, including a brand new How WWE Should Have Booked written by this virulent son of a bitch. It will also have a list of the 100 best wrestling matches of all time compiled by WhatCulture staff and wrestling insiders. So the magazine is available to pre-order now. Follow the link in the description and enjoy WhatCulture.com's Wrestling.